Hello folks, if you have been following my tagging series of videos, you would have noticed that first we saw how to do tagging and what are the tagging strategies that you need to follow. And in the same series, today we are going to see what are the restrictions are there when you're doing tagging in your AWS account and what are the limitations that you have and how you can overcome them. So let us go ahead and see that. So one of the most important restrictions or things that you need to remember is your tags or account specific. If you have a multiple accounts spread across a different uh, business units or across an application, then you should remember that if you have a tag in one account, you cannot pull that information into another account. You need to recreate it. And if you want to have a common understanding of your application across accounts, then I would go ahead and recommend you to use the same name or same identifier in multiple accounts so that you can have a horizontal view of your application everywhere. So that is the first thing that you need to remember. And the next thing is tag keys and values are case sensitive. If you're going to have a name and a value tag, both of them are case sensitive. So if your reporting tool is not able to understand these differences or if your developers are not understanding this, then they might be ending up creating duplicate tags and which might cause problems when you're doing in cost aggregation or cost allocation to different teams. For example, the most common thing is the marketing here on the left hand side is an uppercase M on the right hand side is a lowercase M and then the cost for both of these tags will be different and there is no easy way to correlate them. So when you're defining your tagging strategy, make sure that it is consistent. Either everything is uppercase or everything is lowercase or you do a Pascal case so that people will understand what kind of tags that they need to use and what kind of cases they need to apply there. Then tags are unique per resource. That means that if you have two web servers, each of them can have a name tag. They can know way impact the other one. Say you can have the first one called as production web 001 and the second one also called as the production zero production web 001 and there is nothing wrong with that. The reason for that is the tags remain within the context or domain of that resource itself and you can have the same unique values for each of them and you should be able to identify them across domains as well. So this is the reason why I recommend you adding something called as an application ID or an unique identifier across multiple resources so that you can do a cost aggregation very easily. Finally, tags cannot begin with the prefix called as AWS colon. That the reason for that is Amazon reserves that prefix for their ARN numbers and certain other information. So you cannot have a tag with that prefix. You can have anything saying your company name hyphen environment hyphen application name or hyphen anything. The delimiter in this case I gave is hyphen. You can use colons, pipes or anything that is approved by the AWS tagging API mechanism. So the next one that you are going to look at is you need to enforce your tagging with technology and not just policy. What it means is you can have an organization level policy by your designed by your uh, architect team or your design authority saying these are the mandatory tags that you need to follow. These are the resources that can be allowed to, for tagging and these are the things. But that policy is quite often overridden by the developers or sometimes someone inadvertently creates a resource without those mandatory policies. In those cases, you would want to have some kind of a technology which can go ahead and check out your account, whether the tags have been complied for or if not, it can create a report and find out the non-compliances and it makes it easy for you to fix those problems. The next thing is tagging is not retroactive. Although you can go ahead and add tags for your resources that has been already created, what it means is if you are going to create a new policy saying all my resources are going to have some new tags, then the, all the resources that has been already created will not have those tags. So that is the reason you need to have your strategy well before your resources are created so that you don't have run into the problem of changing your strategy midway and having to go back to all the other resources and adding the new tags. So remember changing the tag is easy, but doing it retroactively is quite costly and time consuming as well. So try to avoid that as much as possible. And the next one is Tags represent a slice in time that we already spoke about this because tags can be changed. That also means that today what is named as production web 001 might be changed to something like application web 001 tomorrow. 
So when you when you take a tag for your reporting, you should also know that uh, this is a representing a point in time data and can change over a period of time yeah, unless your tagging policy or tagging strategy or the technology that you use to enforce this compliance is strong enough. So or, or you have control mechanisms so that people do go ahead and change their resource names. The final one is mind the tag size limitations. For example, you can have 50 tags per resource in most of the AWS components. And each of those tags can have a length of about 128 characters. So you have a lot of space to add quite a lot of information inside your tags. And AWS also allows you something called as a composite tag. For example, you can have a resource with as having a tag as name. And then in that tag, you can have the application followed by uh, your instance and then the followed by the instance identifier and also the role of that instance also. Or you can split it up into individual tags by name separately equal to say SAP and then you can have an instance 001 and role as web server or application server. So when you're using a composite tag, remember that you need to define what is going to be a delimiter. Say a pipe can be a delimiter or hyphen can be a delimiter. But make sure that delimiter itself is not passed up part of the value of the tag. Otherwise, your automation algorithms or scripts are going to have some problems in finding out what is the value of the composite tag and it will break somewhere down the line. So these are some of the restrictions and limitations that comes along with your tagging strategies. So be mindful of them when you're defining your tagging strategy and implementing it in your account. Mm -hmm. If you have any problems in implementing any of the suggestions that you have mentioned here, go ahead and put them in the comment section. I'd be happy to help you with them. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.